It was a quiet Sunday morning in February. A friend of mine called me in a panic. She had just picked up a rescue dog from our local shelter that she was going to foster. He was found running along a very busy road and extremely matted. She hated to ask me to groom him on my day off, but she knew that I could help him and she knew that he needed immediate relief from these mats especially. And I am a professional pet groomer, so I have all the tools, products, equipment that's needed to safely get this guy back to good. And that's exactly what we're gonna do right here, right now, my friends. Let's get started. It's definitely safe to assume that this guy's never had a haircut and this is a very tough haircut for him to endure because it's a matted groom. It's not your normal haircut. But because I know he has not had a haircut or he's not used to clipping and being clipped and being on a grooming table, that is why I'm not starting at his neck, which is where I typically would, down the back of the skull and come on down the body. But for him, I am not going to start there because I want to keep the clipper a little further away from his head head so that he can digest the idea of getting used to the sound and the vibration of the clipper. We found a tick and we safely removed it and we're going to continue on. I'm using a number 7F detachable blade. This is the wall competition series blade. I like to use a 7F on a matted dog, especially for the body and the legs mainly. The reason I use a 7F blade is simply because it has just the right length on the teeth of the blade to be capable of getting between the mat and the skin and that's so important. If you compare a 7 blade to a 10 blade, the 10 blade doesn't have the same spacing between the teeth. It just doesn't have the same length of the teeth as a 7 blade and I feel like the 7 blade just performs perfectly for this matted coat. It, it kind of grabs into, gets in between the mat and the skin and that's what's important. I also want you to always remember when you're shaving a dog with mats that mats are painful painful for the dog to wear. As the fur becomes tightly matted against the skin, when the dog moves or even walks, the mats can tug on the skin with every step. We really have to remember when we are shaving a matted coat like this. Dogs will be protective of themselves because the mats are pulling their skin. And when you attempt to shave a matted dog, the dog will become concerned with your efforts to free them of the condition that their coat is in. When clipping the fur from the flank skin here, which is where the loose skin that connects the front leg to the body, be sure to clip off the flank skin, not towards it. The flank is one of the many danger zones that can easily be cut by a clipper blade due to the skin's texture. It's very thin, it's very loose there. So definitely clip off the flank, not towards it. You can even use your other hand behind the flank skin to flatten it out so that you can clip off of it. Because this guy is matted everywhere, including his tail, we are going to take all this hair off with a seven blade, gently and carefully, clipping in the direction of the lay of the coat. This is an emergency groom on a golden doodle, and we know golden doodles grow coat, and consider this one has probably never had a haircut, and he's about 15 months old. So what we're doing right now is we're taking all this unkept hair, matted hair, off of this guy. And what we do know as that golden doodles grow coat. He's gonna grow a beautiful, healthy new coat back after this grows out. The dog's comfort and protection and safety is the most important thing right now. As we're working with this coat, it's risky to trim a matted dog. And the reason for that is that the mats can be so tight to the skin that they can actually pull the skin in towards the clipper blade. Some of these mats, such as this one, are located in areas of the skin that is very tender and very thin, so it can be dangerous. Dangerous. And I want you to make note that right now I am clipping around this dog's testicles. He is intact. Where are his testicles? They're in my hand pulled up underneath him so I am sure that I do not nick them. That would hurt. I'm still using that seven blade because it is the best blade to get at these mats. But later in this video I'm going to show you how I use a ten blade with an adjustable blade clipper style to really get in here and clean up that area. 
Another thing that's different from this groom than usual for me is I typically will bathe the dog first. And in this case, I'm not even sure if I'm going to get a chance to bathe this dog because the groom is going to be so lengthy. But another reason why I'm not bathing him before I trim him is because his coat is in such bad condition. If I bathed him now, before clipping, the mats would become much, much worse. And we don't want that. So we need to get this coat off and then we'll decide how we're gonna clean him up. Notice my clipping direction is most always with the lay of the coat. But another thing that's imperative is that I kind of stretch the skin a little bit, keep the tension out of the skin so that there's no chance of the clipper blade getting a hold of skin as it's going between the skin and the tight mats. There's so many important things to know when you are working with a matted dog especially. And one of those things is to really utilize your other hand. As you see here, my other hand is helping me protect the skin and stretch the skin and pull the skin taut so that the clipper can glide between the mat and the skin. Your other hand is always doing something in a groom, guys, regardless of whether it's a matted dog or not. So from here on out in this video, I want you to really pay attention to what my other hand is doing at all times, how it's assisting in the groom, because whether or not you're trimming a matted dog, that other hand is what helps you have successful grooming sessions. Another very important thing about grooming dogs is to follow the same steps when you're grooming dogs. What step are we on right now? We are still on clipper work. So if I start with a seven blade and I'm going to clip off as much of this coat on this dog as possible other than the coat that is inside of the sanitary areas, I'm going to complete all of my number seven blade work first and then I'm going to switch over to my either my adjustable blade clipper with the 10 blade or I'm going to put a 10 blade on this detachable blade clipper that I'm using right now which is the wall km10. People who watch my videos often ask me, how do you get the dogs to comply with you during grooming sessions? Or how do you get them to stand nicely and stay nicely on the grooming table? As you see in this video, this dog that I'm working with, I have never worked with him before ever. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's never been groomed before. Honestly, judging by the condition of his coat. So what is my secret? I'm going to give you a big, big cookie right now. If you're just learning to groom dogs, bring it in. Listen close. The first thing you bring to the grooming table is confidence. And you never bring nervous energy to the grooming table. Now guys, this groom in particular, this groom here, I was a little stressed prior to grooming him. In other words, when I got the call the night before that I was gonna be doing this the next morning, I had to give it a lot of thought. I had to prepare my mind mentally for grooming this dog because I knew that he probably had never been groomed before and I knew that it was a hard groom. It would be hard for both of us, both me and the dog. So coming up with my game plan the night before and getting over any bad energy about this groom that I may have had was important to prepare my mind for this groom before I brought this dog on the grooming table. So now that we know I have confidence in this groom, let me tell you how the dog is feeling. The dog entered a grooming salon which he did not know where he was or why he was there. He knew it was different from anything he had experienced. The smell of the tools, the smell of other dogs. He was exposed to a new person, which was me, and he didn't know me. So he had to be bringing apprehension into the grooming salon and his feelings. So it is my job to take that away from him by giving him my confidence and my calm feelings about what we were going to do together because that definitely can counteract their nervousness to an extent and once they see that you are working with them in a very fair way and that you're actually working together they feel that sense of bonding with you immediately that, that they're in your hands and they trust you it does help them to allow this process one of which most of the time they are not familiar with grooming that is why they're in this state that's why they're in this condition. It's important for us 
to bring our confidence, our calm, good vibes to the grooming table, especially for the dog. Now, how to avoid becoming frustrated when you can't get the dog to work with you because he's afraid? This is how you avoid becoming frustrated. You put yourself in his mindset. Have empathy for him. And instead of becoming frustrated, which he will feel that energy and know that you're frustrated with him and he will become more frustrated. So instead of retaliating frustration with frustration, have empathy and assure him. Take those moments when he can't settle down, just like now. Take those moments to reassure him. Put the clipper down. Put your hands on him. Talk quiet, soft. Be in his space. Let him know you're sharing space. That's all reassuring. And I'm telling you guys, these are secrets to grooming dogs. This is how you can do it. They are a dog. They do not speak our language. They certainly don't care about getting a haircut as much as we care about giving them one. So when they become frustrated, don't retaliate that with your own frustration. Whether you act like you're frustrated or not, the dog will know it if you are. So when you feel your frustration starting to well up, put the clipper down, put your hands on the dog, talk quiet. It's going to be okay with your hands on the dog. It's all energy, guys. They can feel your energy. They can and it will help them. It may never be a perfect groom when you're grooming a matted dog, but you can take those moments to desensitize his fears and his frustrations by giving him and offering him your reassurance and your lack of frustration with him. Okay, that was a good talk. Now let me explain to you how you get through these mats. You want to rock your clipper blade like a rocking chair, really. You rock it through the mats. You got to keep the skin taut as we spoke earlier about. You have to kind of rock that clipper blade between the skin and the mat in order to keep lifting the coat away from the skin as you're clipping it. With the blade parallel to the skin, you'll need to apply only enough pressure on the blade to roll the skin in front of the blade. And as we're clipping this dog, we're going to find things in the coat. <laughs> we found another tick. And that's okay. We're going to safely remove it with my hemostat and we're going to move on. A lot of people freak out when they see ticks or parasites or whatnot on a dog. And I'd rather see a tick than fleas, to be honest with you, because fleas will contaminate my shop. But a tick, I can get rid of, put him to death and rescue the dog from the tick. So I get as close to the skin as possible, push the skin flat, and just pop that tick right out of there. As a groomer, it's just my job to get it off of there. It's not my job to treat the dog. Throat area is loose skin, so this is a time when we're going to kind of stretch the skin with our other hands so that we're sure not to nick the dog with this clipper blade. The legs of a matted dog are usually going to prove to be the tightest mats in the legs and the groin and the areas where the dogs have the most movement their body has the most movement in these areas and these are going to be the areas that have the tightest matting and this is unfortunate because their legs are bony it's sensitive this is really sensitive to shave the mats off of a leg because they are so tightly matted and the leg is sensitive because there's there's not a lot of tissue here you know they have a lot of sensation they have a lot of feeling in those areas so be compassionate remember we don't want to allow this dog to become frustrated so one of the important things is this this area is, is, is an annoying area for the dog when we're shaving the mats. If you have to, you can stop and move on to another leg or move on to, you know, shaving the head or the back and come back to it because by then he'll have forgotten that he was becoming frustrated. You just really should try to avoid them becoming frustrated because it's hard to settle them down in their mind after they've become frustrated. So now where are we in the steps of this groom? We're still on clipper work. Hey, listen, I have a blueprint. This $4.99 that you can purchase. I will link it in the description. It will keep you on track with your grooms. That's why I created it. But yes, we are still on clipper work. And the majority of this groom for this guy is going to be clipper work. We certainly can't rush the clipper work on a matted groom, guys. There's just no way. The clipper work is, is all inclusive. 
It seriously is. Remember, we talked earlier about rocking that clipper blade through the mats. It's very important. That, that is the method when you're clipping a matted dog. You also need to stretch out your dog, which helps take the tension off the skin. What does that mean, stretch out the dog? I mean, don't allow him to coil himself up like a snake on your dog grooming table. Make him stand up straight, stretch out his legs, position his legs so that he's standing properly on the table. Sometimes you have to pick a leg up and put it down. Make him stand the way you need him to stand so you can safely clip him. I mentioned earlier, I always have my other hand assisting. Look where my other hand is. These little tips and secrets are what will allow you to have successful grooming sessions whether it's a matted dog or not these are the things that often aren't taught in grooming school or with grooming courses and I feel they're so important that's why I stress them so much in all of my videos is to always watch what my other hand is doing how my other hand helps to produce good clipper work by keeping the skin taut or by assisting the dog or reminding the dog to stay standing on the table or lifting a leg so I can clip the other leg all these things are so important and it's just often not stressed upon enough when you're learning to groom whether it's a course or a school now maybe it is nowadays but it didn't used to be look at my other hand right now holding and protecting the loose skin away from the blade you know I make these videos for you I make them to help you if my videos have helped you please leave a comment so I know how I've helped you now we're moving on to another area that is often severely matted. That's right behind the ears. And dogs move their ears constantly. When they run, their ears flap around and it causes matting back here. And uh, it's also usually pretty soft fur does mat easily. So you take your time, you use that rocking motion that we talked about and you rock your way right through those mats. So here's something else I want to talk to you about. How do we avoid having to groom matted dogs? Oh, we also noticed he had a little injury on top of his head, which could be why he's so sensitive to having anything on his muzzle shaved. He's very sensitive around his mouth too. So we don't know the history of this guy. We don't know what has happened to him and if anything has happened to him. And it, he definitely has a big healing gash on the top of his head. But back to my earlier thought, how do we avoid having to groom matted dogs? How do we keep them from becoming matted? In this case, this guy was neglected and, and he was, you know, running loose and nobody came looking for him. And he's in foster care right now. So this, this, this one couldn't be avoided. He's definitely matted. And sometimes you will get a customer who has rescued a dog and, and it was matted, you know, and it was an issue. So you, you do have to do these grooms from time to time, guys, especially if you're a professional, you are going to have to do these types of grooms. But how do we keep this from happening again? What we do is we be certain that this dog comes back in within six to eight weeks no later and you insist upon that when you check the dog out i am ready to schedule him for his next groom well i'll call you we'll do it another time no if you want me to groom your dog ever again he must get on my schedule and groomers you have to be adamant about this and pet owners if you own a dog and you take it to the groomer and and they take care of it and he was in a bad way was matted or whatever that's your responsibility to then say and i would like to make my next appointment within eight weeks when you come to pick your dog up and you will never have a matted dog. This is not what you ever want to allow your dog to become. This is neglect and you love your dogs way too much to ever allow this to happen. So here in his private areas, this is where I was telling you I was going to be switching to a different clipper and a different blade. I am using a 10 blade setting on the Joyzy Hornet adjustable blade clipper. And this clipper proved to be so fantastic in these areas of this groom. It's so gentle. The blades do not get hot at all ever because they're not made of metal. It just really comfortably helped me clip all this terrible matting and nastiness away from this dog's tender skin areas. And let's revisit something. Look where my other hand is. Look what it's doing. I'm holding his testicles out of the way. And remember when I told you sometimes you have to reposition your dog in a standing position? This is one of them. Watch. I get him to stand more comfortably and then I continue. Sometimes you have to reset them by the way you position them on the table. 
And again, this Joyzy Hornet has really impressed me for this groom, especially in these sensitive areas. That's the only place that I'm using this Joyzy Hornet on this groom is in the armpits, around the anus, around the penis, the privates, around the inside of the ears, pads of feet. That's all going to be done now with this clipper. But what you need to notice too is I performed all clipper work with my detachable blade clipper when I was using the seven blade. Now I've switched to a 10 blade and I'm going to complete all the clipper work with my 10 blade and then I'm going to switch to a 30 blade when I get to the pads of the feet only and I will complete all the clipper work with my 30 blade. Following the same steps every dog every groom is what will help you create a grooming session that you don't have to think too hard about. You just have to focus on what you're doing. Shaving the inside of the ears can be a real danger zone, guys. So you want to be sure to shave off the ear leather in all four directions, not towards the ear. Shave off in all four directions. It's very important. Now we're still with this 10 blade, and he's very sensitive on this side. That's why we think something's up with that side of his face. He does have that injury at the top of his head. So I'm trying to desensitize him a little bit and allow me to go ahead and clean up that side of his face but he was just so reluctant. Now I've switched to that 30 blade setting and I'm just cleaning up the pads of feet. You shave that big V pad in the back in a V shape so that you don't nick the tendon that is right there at the base of that V pad. The 30 blade with very little if any pressure will just clean all this up so so beautifully. I will only ever use a 30 blade in the pads of feet. The next step is scissor work. We have performed all our clipper work and now it's time for the scissor finishing work. And this is another tool that our young man here is very unfamiliar with. We have to be very focused, pay attention to him. Any quick movements, you know, we could look how close I'm trimming his ear leather here. You know, a quick movement could prove to be pretty bad and an injury for sure, trip to the vet. So you always want to pay attention to your dog's behavior and by having your hands on them at all times, my other hand is always guiding, but it tells me if they're going to make any quick movements. You know, anything unpredictable, you've got to be careful about that, especially with a dog that's matted and you've never groomed before. And don't forget between those toes, guys, when we're talking about a matted dog, there is definitely going to be mats in between the toes. It can be very hard to work through that. A little bit uncomfortable to the dog, but you need to make it as good for him as possible. Using this clipper definitely helps. It's very gentle. It's very kind in these areas but you have to kind of separate the toes and get in there gently and I had to switch back to my clipper here guys you know so I was using shears I moved on to scissor work but he was a little bit unpredictable with some of the scissor work in some areas and I feel com more comfortable using my clipper here in these feet especially with these mats I certainly don't want to go in there with a scissor or a shear because I feel like it would be too risky for him especially since he's not too cooperative about being groomed pure period, but yet using sharp tools could prove to be dangerous. So sometimes you have to go back to your clipper with a 10 blade. Because remember, this is a special type of a groom. And now it's time for scissor work. Moving on to that final step, the scissor finishing work. All I'm doing for him for scissor finishing work, guys, because most of his groom was clipper work. Remember that? The clipper is what safely removes those mats. The only thing that I'm doing with my shears is just leveling off anything that's uneven, really. I'm just evening things out. Use your brush, use your comb, get the hair sticking out where it needs to stick out. Outline your dog. We're outlining our dog with the shear. Use your brush and your comb constantly for the scissor finishing work. You're gently just going to lift the hair out from places that it is hiding at so that you can give a smooth outline look to the dog. I mean, he's still going to look great even though we had to give him a clip down with a seven blade. These are my shears, my signature shears. They are made by the best shear manufacturer available. Kenshi Grooming. Kenshi Grooming teamed up with me to make the perfect shear set for you and your pets. This is for the beginner. This is for the everyday pet groomer. These shears are workhorse shears. 
And once again, our boy here is not having the scissor work around his lips in these areas that we couldn't get with the clipper. So we are going to go back with that Joy Z Hornet clipper because it is safe in those areas that he is just really moving around way too much to try and use a shear in this area, guys. It would just be too dangerous. So sometimes you have to go back to that clipper. Now here's another tip. I intentionally left two of his paw pads that needed to still be clipped in case I needed to give him a break from the areas that he was struggling with. Struggling to let me groom around his face especially. This was strategic. I left two paw pads that I could come back to and trim to take his mind off of me working in areas that he was not happy with. I did this because he didn't mind me shaving his paw pads. So it would certainly be something that I could go back to if he was struggling with a certain area like he really struggled with the backs of his legs he didn't like me clipping there so I knew when I was trimming out his paw pads and he was having it that I needed to leave two paw pads in case I needed to go back to it and give him a break from other areas so now let's see if we can just finish right around his face and his lips notice how I do one snip and then I reassure I give him one snip and then I reassure assure him and it worked this dog's name is Frankie and he is in a good home now and I will show you those pictures in a minute but what I want to tell you is Frankie and I in this grooming session we figured out a lot about each other in this two and a half hour grooming session we learned a lot about each other and we did that because we were in tune with one another and it's so important to be in tune with the dogs that you groom and understand how they may be feeling at the moment I've worked with dogs professionally for 20 years. I've had dogs my whole life. In the 20 years of working with dogs, I have learned so much from the dogs and that's why I really love sharing my videos with you because I really do share with you the things that dogs have taught me. The things dogs have taught me about how to work with them. I mean, it's a gift. It is totally a gift that they have given me. I've learned so many lessons from dogs that I worked with, dogs that I didn't even know. I'm just forever grateful for it. When it came time to trim Frankie's nails, he was very cooperative. He didn't mind that a bit. And to be honest with you, his nails weren't terribly overgrown and I feel it's because he was he was a runner he was a farm dog and he was roaming and he was unneutered that's gonna get Frankie into trouble it led him to a bad road where he could have been killed and possibly he has been hit by a car before he lived in a busy area nobody came looking for Frankie they didn't go to the shelter that was five miles down the road that's where dogs are taken when they're strays nobody came looking for Frankie. Fortunately, the shelter took care of neutering Frankie. My friend Michelle, who Frankie will be forever grateful to, fostered him until he found his forever home with his family, with kids. This dog is perfect for kids, and he got it. So this is not a sad story. This is a good story. Even though it's me grooming a matted dog, it's a good story. Frankie and I thank you very much for watching this video. Now I'm gonna show you some happy footage of Frankie when he gets off the grooming table and when he finally meets his family, his forever family. That's great. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that stack, taking big swings, each hand to the back, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag, cause I sing what I mean, and I bring it to the mad light, ain't got time to kill, I got time to fail, I took a red pill, I know life's short, so I wanna live real, but how's it supposed to feel?